Welcome to Stuff You Missed in History Class, a production of iHeartRadio. Hello and happy Friday. I'm Tracy V. Wilson. And I'm Holly Fry. We talked all this week about Ida Tarbell and the, uh, the history of the Standard Oil Company that she wrote, the breakup of Standard Oil, a really weird coincidence, which was not why I chose this piece. I, ch- I chose it, as I said, because I was listening to Scene on Radio and I emailed myself from my yard to be like, do this podcast. Uh, but literally as I was researching and writing it, a bunch of the successor companies to Standard Oil were doing congressional hearings about deceiving people about whether climate change is real. And I was like, man, this is causing me to just have a lot of feelings. feelings. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of feelings. Uh, I had this, like, tandem feeling of, like, man, uh, Ida Tarbell did this, um, all this amazing work. She... Uh, she led to the the breakup of this company that had a lot of unfair business practices, but also people involved with it didn't really have any kind of consequences and made a whole lot more more money. And now this is happening. Yeah, no, no repercussions there. Now a hundred and something years later, yeah, that was a a lot of circular <laughs> brain time spent on that while working on this. Right, that's one of the the things I think we've all bumped up against it, where there's, like, the despondency of studying history and realizing that, like, the hubris of modern man is to always think we have come farther than any previous people, um, but humankind is still making the same mistakes over and over, (laughs) sometimes even when you're waving a sign that outlines those mistakes very clearly, uh, which can be very, very frustrating. This was also an interesting episode for me to research because a lot of what she was investigating, uh, the reason these practices were either frowned upon or illegal or both, was because of what the idea of capitalism is supposed to be like in the United States. Like, there's this idea that capitalism is supposed to involve healthy competition within free markets. And it's like, Resting on that idea, if then you go and collude with the railroads to get yourself rates that no one else can have so that you have this unfair business advantage, that's totally the wrong thing to do. Uh, But there were and still are people who were like, they were just doing, they were making good business deals. They had the power to make good business deals, so why not? Uh, Holly is making a face that our listeners cannot see, but man, it is a grimace. You know, it's that thing where there are, I think, two prongs to this that are inherently problematic, right? One is that there is a tendency for some folks to, like, trust in that, you know, good, healthy competition of capitalism on the presumption that there will be enough morality in play that no one will do things to really hurt other people. Right. Which then gets kind of occluded by that other thing you mentioned of people going, yes, but they're just making good business decisions. Mm -hmm. The problem is that on paper, things that are good business decisions in terms of numbers and money are often terrible decisions for fellow humans. Yes, including the entire planet. At this point. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, (laughs) That's why I'm like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give another shout out to the the Scene on Radio podcast that inspired this episode. The entire season is not out yet as of when we are recording this. And I think there's probably an episode that, that has not dropped yet that exists as of when we are recording this behind the scenes. Um. But the first four episodes are sort of a big picture historical arc of like, how did we get to this point where we are in the West's relationship to the planet that is so contrary to the relationship of so many uh, indigenous peoples who are not lumped in generally as part of, quote, the West. And then part five starts with looking at things that are happening right now in the Earth today where we can see what's happening, and we can, like, see the evidence of the impact that the climate is happening. So it can be tough to listen to, but also really important to listen to, and also incredibly well done. The other point that I would 
wanted to make, make sure to make was, wow, Ida Tarbell is just so fascinating and complicated to me. Yeah. Because if you just take any one piece out of her biography, uh, like if you look only at writing the history of the Standard Oil Company, she can seem like somebody who was like a dedicated anti-capitalist. Totally not true. If you look at just that and the fact that she was an investigative journalist and had a college degree at a time when most women could not go to college because colleges weren't admitting women. Like, you can think that she was an an early example of feminism when she was decidedly anti-feminist in a lot of her opinions. There's so many pieces of it that if you just take this one little slice, you get a very different picture from, like, Ida Tarbell as a whole. (laughs) Which is, is, there's a beautiful parallelism, right, between that and her research in France where she was going and thinking she was establishing... Madame Roland in one way and it was like oh no she's all complicated and contradictory and I'm like girl look at yourself (laughs) (laughs) all of us are that's not even a finger point but like no one is no one is a simple machine right we all have contradictory things that we we hold in our hearts as though they are completely normal to coexist but it is very funny when she's like ah this woman, not what I thought. Oh, by not the way. Not what I thought was going to happen. Women's rights, not so much. <laughs> um, I also was just incredibly fascinated by the story of her father having to return home on foot and just stopping at, at small towns to be like, can I teach your kids for a little bit so I can earn enough money or like barter for some new shoes? It's a different world. Can you imagine if someone came to your door today, presuming you were a parent, and said, can I teach your kids for a little while? Would you be like, get out? (laughs) Yeah, that actually, that came up in her story in other contexts of like living in an oil boom town in the latter half of the 19th century. How it was just totally common practice for people who needed money to show up on a person's doorstep and be like, hey, do you have any work I can do? Uh, And, you know, getting a little money or getting a meal or whatever, how that was just, like, how the world operated. And that is not how the world operates here where we're living now. I know in other places of the world that's not necessarily the case. But, yeah, it was, like, just a totally different way that society worked. Oh, yeah. So my last thing that I just found so delightful was the story about the fraternity pins. (laughs) (laughs) The weird dramas... Of different social structures are ceaselessly entertaining. (laughs) Yeah, well, and also that was like a slightly different nuance of wearing somebody's pin than, um, like, I'm most familiar with the idea of getting pinned, you are now somebody's steady, significant other, right? Right. And this wasn't exactly that, but also kind of had some of that flavor, and so just wearing four different pins to chapel, giant problem. (laughs) Can you imagine... (laughs) Uh, anyway she's so complicated but I still really love her so I'm glad uh, I'm glad I emailed myself from my yard to be like do this podcast Uh, if you'd like to send us a note we're at historypodcast at iheartradio.com and since it's Friday happy Friday everybody whatever's on your plate for the weekend we hope it goes super well we will be back tomorrow with a classic episode from somewhere in the back catalog And we will be back Monday with something brand new. Stuff You Missed in History Class is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.